He's on the road. He spins off the road. He's moving around. Now he's getting a little bit of a rip. He finally got that second win. Can't be stopped. If you're looking for a way to power up your nutrients with a plant-based protein powder, then raw vegan plant-based protein is the perfect choice. This vegan protein is packed with essential nutrients to help you stay energized and healthy. With plant-based protein powder becoming increasingly popular amongst health conscious individuals, it's no surprise that raw vegan plant-based proteins has become a leader in the industry. Whether you're an athlete or just looking to increase your daily protein intake, this vegan protein powder can help you reach your goals. Visit rawvegan.com. Again, rawvegan.com. For the winner by majority decision, Montel Ice Griffin. Jones comes in and lands the right hand lead again. And a couple of left hooks. And Griffin's knee goes down. And Jones lands two punches after Griffin's knee was on the canvas. And now Griffin slopes forward. And Tony Perez starts the count. That was a foul. Yes. On this very day, uh, that controversial situation happened uh, between Montel Griffin and Roy Jones. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a very special guest in the building today. We have no other than former world champion Montel Ice Griffin. How's it going, brother? What's going on, man? I'm good. How y'all doing? Man, all is well, champ, man. All is well, man. It's an honor and a pleasure to have you on here. We thank you for come, being able to come on here, man, and spend some time with the second win sports media. Um, we're going to start this thing off, champ. Uh, how did this thing start? When did you start in boxing? What made you start boxing? Uh, my father um, took my brother to the gym to learn self-defense. And uh, he was working with Johnny Kulon, who was a former world Dynaway champion from Canada, and they became real close. And uh, Johnny was getting real old, so uh, my father ended up taking over and buying the gym. So uh, I was in the gym as a kid and uh, just doing my thing. Yes, indeed, man. You, um, I didn't realize your height, man. You know, uh, for you was a, you was a, you know, as I as I'm studied. A midget. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, me too, man. Me you too. Didn't say it, but that's what it was. <laughs> but, but but you know, um, you went up against the best man, and you put that work in, man. You had a vicious jab, your head movement. You wasn't taking a lot of shots. You was getting out of the way a lot of shots, man. Um, do you do? Did your father uh, uh give you that defensive skills that you had? Did I work on that in the gym? Nah, I, I was I was five six years old. Uh, I don't remember learning how to box. Okay. Um, I was five six uh, six years old. My father had, had na a, a projector, a nine millimeter projector screen, and I used to just watch fights. And um, all the uh, all the uh, slick fighters, the ones that didn't get hit, you know what I'm saying? I, I like I like watching them. And then yeah. uh, he showed me a video of Muhammad Ali, and it was over after that. I knew that's what I wanted to do in life. Yeah, man, you um, you had a nice jab to be short like that, man. You you, I watched one of these fights. You man was fighting this tall guy, man, and you was jabbing the hell out of him, man. He, he had he had you by about a good seven inches, man. But you was yeah. putting that jab in his face, moving your head and 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 going to work, man. Um, um, nineteen ninety two, you was an Olympian. Uh, explain that experience being an Olympian. Well, it was the greatest experience in my life in my boxing career because um, 
I quit boxing in 1983. I was 12 going on 13. And I took off for eight years. And uh, I ended up coming back to boxing. And then in 30 amateur fights, I made the Olympic team. So I know, uh, I think George Foreman and Deontay Wilder, I think they made the team with, uh, with, uh, with a small amount of fights. But uh, I made the Olympic team with 30 uh, amateur fights. And I thought that was uh, pretty impressive. Because, you know, also I wanted to punch it like them. I was yeah. a heavyweight, so you know what I'm saying. I was I was doing it with skills, and and I was only five for seven. Wow, wow, yeah. I I didn't realize you was that short, five seven, to be a light heavyweight, but to win titles as a light heavyweight at five seven, man, you definitely uh go down as one of the greats, man, for sure, man. Um, I, give I me really some, appreciate that, man. Yeah, yeah, most definitely, man. I've been I've been paying attention to your career for a long time since since the nineties, and um, you you definitely, man, one of the ones that got the uh, boxing IQ, head movement, and uh, I can tell you a true student of the sport, man. Yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah, so, I was, I was everybody. yeah, I can tell, man. Uh, um, Chicago, hometown, right? Chicago. Yeah. And, and how is it uh, uh, being a fighter coming out of Chicago? Well, uh, you know, it's kind of uh, kind of difficult because Chicago is a huge city. They have a thousand, you know, me, you know, millions and millions of people here, and there's so much other things going on. And you know, boxing is not is not the first sport in the city. So, you know, I just give you an example. Uh, 96, 97 was probably the best three years of my pro career, but the Bulls was winning and Michael Jordan was the man, so, so I never got no love. I dig it. I dig it. It sounds like a similar experience. A lot of our uh, our fighters in this area feel the same way. We from D.C. area, so a lot of our uh, the guys okay, yeah. feel the same way when it comes to getting love in the city, so um, we, we truly... Yeah, great fighters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Appreciate that, man. Definitely, man. Um, I'm going to pass it on to my partner, C's, man. He got questions for you, man, as far as your pro career. All right. All right. Uh, I'm going to start with the 92. How did um that Olympic running, that Olympics experience and winning the U.S. Amateur Championship, how did that shape your early career? Well, you know, uh, like I said, you know, I quit in 1983. I didn't box for eight years. I came back in 91. Uh, I made it to the novice U.S. championships, but I broke my thumb. I couldn't find the championship. So I got, you know, and also I was fighting heavyweight at the time. I was 2-10 when I got to L.A. I got my weight down. I went to the National Golden Gloves in 91. It fought Jeremy Williams, who had over like 170 fights. And um, I had seven fights. I lied on my, my boxing uh, when I filled out for the tournament. I told him I had 12 fights, but I only had two fights. Oh. And I fought and made it to the Nationals. And by the time I fought Jeremy, I had seven fights. And uh, I just impressed everybody. You know, everybody was wondering where I came from because I just came out of nowhere. Uh, wow. <laughs> That's a hell of a story, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and um, what drove your decision to go pro? Well, of course, you know, when I made the Olympic team with 30 amateur fights, I knew I was ready. I knew I was good enough to turn pro. But, um, you know, I was actually sparring uh, Reggie Johnson, sweet Reggie Johnson. I think he three time Reg. world champ. Yes, Larry indeed. Musgrove, uh, uh, James the Heat Kitchen. I sparred all those as amateurs. And um, I knew I was good enough to turn pro. And um, when the Olympics was over, Jackie Callen called me and invited me up to Michigan because uh, uh, Han James Tony wanted to manage me. And I ended up sparring James Tony. And after that, I, I knew I was ready. Wow. Mm. Nice. <laughs> so now you had a nice, a nice, pretty successful uh, professional career. What do you consider your breakthrough fight? Uh, uh, when I fought Ray Lathan, uh, my uh, 14 pro fight, I fought Ray Lathan. He was 14 and over 13 knockouts. To this day, he's the hardest man to ever hit me in my life, the hardest puncher. And, um, you know, that was a, the, a huge test. I went out there and uh, I actually had him hurt and dropped him. And I actually think I stopped him, but uh, the bear 
cover on and he got saved by the bell. So I got a little, I got a little careless and he ended up dropping me and I got back together and won the fight. But after that fight, I knew I was good enough to beat anybody. Uh, and that first fight against Roy, why don't we just show, ended in controversy. Um, what was going through your mind during that fight and immediately after that fight? Well, the whole fight, uh, you know, like, you know what I'm saying? I, I hate watching this because it was, it was some dirty ass shit. Um, he was frustrated. I gave him all the problems in the way. He, he, I had to say this first. He was the number one pound for pound fighter at the time. Mm-hmm. And people say he was the greatest fighter ever. And I went mm-hmm. out there and I was beating him. And he got frustrated and he hit me on, on my knee, which is dirty as hell. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I remember watching that fight, man. I was like, oh, man, he getting Roy. I was like, he tried, like, getting Roy. Then I saw that. I was like, oh, man. I yeah, was a little man. mad at that one myself. <laughs> Yeah. It is what it is, man. I man, I've been through so much bullshit in boxing. That is not funny, man. Uh I got my uh the gold medal in Barcelona. I beat a torso of my eye, I cut it out open, and then they, they robbed me. And that you know what I'm saying, that I never recovered from that, but you know what I'm saying? I just uh gave my all kept going on, but uh for some reason, man, I just kept coming up short. Uh I just kept getting stabbed in the back. Yeah. And how did you prepare for the um for the rematch against Roy. Man, I was in tip top. I was in better shape than the first fight. Uh I think HBO came out to UNLV and uh recorded me training and and I know they they went back to Roy and uh gave him saw you know let him know what they saw. So when I, I fought Roy Jones the second fight man I didn't warm up five minutes for that fight. I ain't hmm. got a bullshit I ain't got a lie. I ain't got to make no excuses. You can, you can ask Elvis Grant Phillips from uh, from Grant Boxing Gloves. I didn't warm up five minutes for that fight. Uh, AVL had just gave Roy Jones a new contract, and um, they needed for him to get his belt back, so they fucked me. So that's how that's how I ended up losing that second fight. Yeah. I'll I just say this. This I don't think, so people think people make excuses. If you watch the fight, HBO, the HBO announcer said, Roy Jones have never started this fast. He knew I, he knew I was cold. And he went out there to try to get me out of there. And, uh, you know, but it is what it is. It's like I said, there's one more thing that happens against me in my life, but it is what it is. I just had to take it. Uh, and then as you go on through your career, it was more controversial decisions as you ended your career, I felt, you know. Um, what what do you think led to so much controversy surrounding your decisions? Man, I'm still wanting to this day, man. I'm 54 years old. It still bothers me about not having a gold medal. Uh, you know what I'm saying? The second Roy Jones fight, you know, I got knocked out in the first round. I know I got a chin. I know I can take a punch. He called me cold. And um, it, it just is what it is. I got to live with it. But once I know what happened, so it don't bother me. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And we all know boxing, it's a, you know, it's, it's a mental sport as well as physical. Awesome. It's a corrupt sport. Yeah. It's corrupt as hell. <laughs> That's look true. out for who they want to look out for. And they'll fuck you if you ain't part of the team. Part yeah. of the program. And that's just what happens. I feel you. Yeah. But I want to get to the mental side real quick. Um it's a mental sport as far as far as as well as it is a physical sport. How do you prepare mentally in boxing for like matches? Oh man, the whole thing. My my motto was if I was right, I wouldn't worry about my opponent. So I trained my ass off. I got my weight down. I made weight. Uh, I, I, you know, so I worked hard. You know, I went to Big Bear for two, you know, eight, two months at a time, maybe 10 weeks when I fought Roy the second time. I went for 10 weeks and I was even in better shape. So, you know, so I, I, I love the game and I never cheat the game. Mm. I just I just hate that uh, I never got back from the game what I put into it. Yeah, yeah that's true. Now, now I'm. I want to talk about the James Tony fight real quick. Go back to that. Um, how did you prepare for that, and how did you feel coming into that fight? Uh, I felt great. Like I said, 1992, I sparred James, and I was just an a amateur, and I did pretty good. So when they called me three years later to fight him, I said, hell yeah, I'll fight him. Uh, you came in like tip-top shape. There's all confidence in the world. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, it was, my second, it was only my second 12-round fight. He had 47 fights, but uh, it was my 15th fight. But you know what I'm saying? I, I said, fuck it. 
I, I know how good I was. I said, let's go out there and take it. And that's what I did. Uh, and I think y'all had a rematch, right? Yeah, he beat him I twice. Him again, yeah, you uh, beat him twice. Yeah. I fought him again a year later. I beat him in nine and the seven times. Uh, same thing. You just knew. Man, I, I just put you like this, man. Let's let's just cut to the chase. Man, I was a bad motherfucker, man. <laughs> That's I, a fact. I, I could have been, been one of the greatest fighters ever. I, I lost eight years of my career. I came back. You got to understand one thing. Only fought four years. Only boxed four years when I beat James Tony the first time. Only boxed six years when I fought Roy Jones. Six years. That's it. You know what I'm saying? 33 amateur fights. And um, uh, that was my 27th fight. No, that was my 28th fight when I fought Roy. Uh. Now you mentioned earlier watching Ali tapes. I know you had a relationship with the great one, right? Yeah, now I met Muhammad Ali when I was five years old. I spent a lot of time with him. He showed me mad love. It was uh, some of the greatest experiences of my life to just hang out with that man and you know for him to know my name and call me and hang out with me and play with me and you know, like we train together every day in Deer Lake and he also at my father's gym in, on the South Side of Chicago. So. You know, so Ali just was man. I was just blessed, man. Uh, and how did that help shape your professional career as well? You know what, um, Chris Bird, I didn't really tell nobody because I didn't want them thinking I was bragging or whatever, whatever. So I, you know, I never told nobody. But I let Chris Bird know. I saw him showing all the pictures and everything. Him and Yaya McClain, and they both said, "Man, hang with Ali. Beat had they at least won you twenty fights." And at the time, I didn't really understand it, but. As I got older, I knew what he meant because I just had a mind frame from just being around Muhammad Ali, being confident, and just being like, I felt like I belonged. So, you know what I'm saying? I made, you know what I'm saying? I made a big difference in this boxing game with right. a, with a short, in a short period of time. Mm -hmm. Now, you still keep up with boxing? Uh, no, nah, not like I should, but yeah, I, I watch the fights. So, um, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I'm happy for boxing. Uh, I think right now boxing is uh, comparable to the 90s, which was the best era ever. And I'm not saying it because I fought then. I'm just saying it because all the world champs and all the great fighters from 105 to Humberto Gonzalez, the heavyweight, uh, Lennox Lewis, Mike Tyson, Riddick Bowe, uh, Vander Holyfield, and just all the guys in the, in the middle, uh, Pernell Whitaker and uh, Austin De La Hoya, Bernard Hawkins. We, like I said, it was just, it was just a great era. But yeah. I feel that uh, this era now is uh, it's is, 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 is close. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And what changes have you noticed since you began your career in boxing? Oh, uh, like I said, it's a corrupt game, man. It's gonna be corrupt until the government take over, and um, you know, get it organized, and then, you know, appoint a commissioner and do things right. It's gonna be messed up. Uh, <laughs> now, reflecting on your career. Is there anything you would do differently? I wouldn't have fought Roy Jones in the second fight. Um, I would call myself being a man, giving him a second chance, and I ended up getting fucked out of my title. So I, I, I was a dummy. Um, I had uh, uh, the winner, uh, me and Roy supposed to fight Tommy Hearns. I should have just gave the belt up and fought Tommy Hearns. Because you know, I didn't know they was going to fuck me like that. Yeah. Uh, all right. Now, who were some of the boxers you admired growing up? Like. Well, Muhammad Ali, uh, my favorite fighter is Muhammad Ali, Michael Spinks, uh, James Tony, Pernell Whitaker, and end up being, being Floyd Mayweather. But you know what I'm saying? I, you know, I respect great fighters, man. I love the game, and uh, I, I used to try to pick up you know, whatever I could from all the other different fighters. Mm -hmm. And is there any young boxers today that remind you of yourself or that you just like to watch? Uh. I can't really say for remind me of me, but uh, you know, Terrence Crawford, Jeez. Tank, uh, uh Haney, I can't uh, really say for remind me of me, but uh, Curry. I mean, it's not a great Canelo, a lot of guys I look up to, uh, better be Evan B ball. I can't wait for that fight. So, uh, like I said, boxing is in great hands right now. Uh, but there be Evan B ball gonna be a heck of a fight, man. Oh, uh, I can't the wait. Box, the boxer <laughs> versus the puncher. Um, uh, who, who, who's gonna win? You know, so who's gonna, who's uh, Whose style is gonna win the fight? Yeah, uh, who you saw? Who you who you think going who you think gonna pull it up? It better be if he don't get caught. That's what I said. So, but you know, what I'm <laughs> that's that's a big ass hill. Yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> he's you know he's a better boxer. You know, I lean towards the 
the boxer, you know, because I, I wasn't a puncher, but you know, I always liked the guy who who hit and didn't get hit. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I boxed. Uh, I had 59 pro fights. I'm 54 years old, and and if you talk to me, you can't even tell I boxed before. So, you know what yeah. I'm saying? My defense was on point. And uh, that was the most, most important thing to me. Uh, you got to understand, I was around Muhammad Ali as a kid, and I saw him slow down. I saw what boxing did to him. And so I, I didn't want to be that to happen to me. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Now, what's your thoughts on the light, the current state of the light heavyweight division? Well, like I said, better be and Viva are the two best fighters are going to fight. So uh, we're going to get to the bottom of it. Uh. Yeah, I hope. I think you got Benavidez coming up there too now, because Canelo just playing games, talking about he want two hundred million to fight the man. I don't get I mean, that. I mean, I mean, come on now, Canelo. Uh, Canelo is up there with Floyd. He didn't have some uh, some fights against Floyd. Yeah, he didn't have some fights against Floyd. Floyd didn't have some 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 great uh some great fights where he brought in uh, a lot of fans. Uh, he's a great fighter, and uh, I, I and I ain't mad at him. If it's his last fight, whatever, yeah, he's supposed to get as much as he can. Nah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and looking back, what does what does boxing mean to you, and how has it shaped your life? Uh, without boxing, I don't know where I would be. Uh, boxing, uh, pretty much has uh took care of me my whole life. Uh, I, I missed eight years, and I came back from uh from ninety one. I turned pro in ninety three, so from ninety three to two thousand eleven, uh, I had fifty nine win, fifty nine fights, fifty wins. Uh, 30 knockouts, eight eight losses, but uh, and I got robbed three, four times. But you know, I ain't worried about it. It is what it is, man. Uh, I, my 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 uh my career, you know, speak for itself, man. All right, All right. Got I, some fight, I, I fought everybody. I didn't turn nobody down, and uh, you know what I'm saying. I it's not too many uh, it's not too many people who uh, say I gave him a bad fight. Right. Um. I have a question for you to, for the youth, for the future of boxing. What advice would you give an upcoming amateur on his way to the pro game? Man, be in the best shape possible. Don't gain no, don't gain a lot of weight in between fights. Stay close to your weight. Stay in the gym. Live right. Uh, you know, saying lead a liquor alone, man. I, I drank too much. Uh, you know, saying so you know, I I took my skills for granted. I knew I was better than. Uh, the majority of the guys, so you know, sometimes I let myself go, but uh, you know, so that was a bad habit I had, and you know, it was just my father wasn't there. You know, my father died when I was 12, 13, he was my trainer, and uh, I knew that you know, so he'd have kept me on point, but you know, for him not being that, it, it helped my career, yeah, yeah. I know the feeling. My father was my trainer as well, and I know how that is when um, if he ain't there, it's totally different, you're not gonna. The push level is going to be totally different. You used to being pushed by your father, uh, as you you know. So I know what how that is. So definitely know. You know, how you, know you start making weight. I mean, you start making money, and your life get you start getting a little spoiled a little bit. So yeah, I, I wasn't as focused as I should have been. And I, I know he would have kept me focused, but just, I mean, yes, you know, like I said, man, I lost my father in twelve. He was the reason everything I did in my life. Y'all, 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 y'all talking to a guy who y'all maybe I guess y'all look up to me. I don't know. I respect yeah. my career, but Most man, my father, man, left me at 12 years old, and I did all this without him. Yeah. Uh, that, that, that's a testimony, brother. That's a yeah. testimony, man. Um, We talk about um, um, unions, boxing unions. Do you think that we need a boxing union or some type of governing well, body? Well, for like US? I said, we, we need a commissioner. We, we, need, yeah. we need one commissioner. To run everything, uh, uh, they don't have to get rid of the promoters, but they can use the promoters to to make the fights all over the world. But they they in charge of the judges and the referees and everything. I think every judge that vote a bad decision should get suspended for you know 30, 45 days. I yeah. just think some old you know that everybody needs to uh, to uh, be accountable. Yeah, yeah, for sure, bro. I agree with that totally. Also. You know how the NFL and the NBA has retirement programs. Right, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. We need a commissioner to have a pension. Yeah. Right. Some money in these fighters' uh, pockets and uh, just everything done right, man. Uh, yeah. You got, you know, these guys, uh, baseball, football players, these guys got pensions when they're 56 years old and can take care of themselves. You know what I'm saying? A lot of boxers, 
uh, not doing well right now. So uh, it's a lot of things that can be fixed. Yeah, I agree, bro. I the, agree. Amateurs, the, the amateurs need to be redone. Yeah, uh, they need to have somebody else. A band in charge. Uh, USA Boxing was just shit when I was a kid. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it was. And man. now it's done. You know what I'm saying? It's done, man. Remember the magazine? You got the magazines. You was in the magazines every oh, man. month, man. Remember, remember oh. that the USA magazines back in the day? Man, it, it was just, it was just, man. It yeah, was, it was cool different. to be an amateur, man. You know Damn man? right. You're, yeah. you're going a trip, going a trip with a USA duel. You get your gold check. You got your per diem. You yeah. Got your bag of clothes and everything, man. It was just fun, man. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. Man, listen, champ. It was an honor and a pleasure to have you on here. Uh, we do panels, man. I would love for you to be on some of those panels that we do when we well, you do. You know how to get in touch with me, yeah. man. Most definitely, brother. Man, I definitely appreciate you, man. It was, you know, I hit you up yesterday and you was ready today, man. I I truly appreciate you, man. Yeah, well, I appreciate the love, man. Uh, man, always, man. You one of my favorite fighters. I'm short. I'm definitely. five four. <laughs> I'm five four, and I was fighting one nineteen. So I can imagine. Somebody that's right. five seven fighting five, five. heavy. I got nothing but respect for you, man. You was one of the one of the crates in my eyes, brother. That's all good, man. I, I just want my flowers, man. You know what I'm saying? Hey, you got, I'm 55 okay. years old. I want to get my flowers, man. I, I ain't even on the I ain't even on the Hall of Fame ballot, man. That's nuts, man, you man. should be. You know, between you and Roberto Duran, two short fighters that went to work, man. So and fought the best, the big and the best. So, well, you know, yeah, brother, and I, you know, I don't know if I could be compared with him, but uh, I appreciate that. Yeah, 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 uh, brother. It's an honor and a pleasure, man. You welcome here anytime, ladies and gentlemen. Former world champion Montel Ice Griffin, Respect, the second man. Yeah, have a good night. boxing media. Appreciate you, brother. Right, appreciate you, bro. <laughs>